whose wife is a vampire? This guy's wife is a vampire because she only came to the party after sunset. Whose husband is a werewolf? The girl on the left is sweeping up her cat's hair. See? There's a cat in the background. Meanwhile, there are scratches on the floor and walls in the house of the girl on the right. And this shoe has a torn front. Her husband must be a werewolf. Whose wife is actually a ghost? The woman on the right is wearing a ghost costume. It's Halloween. But the woman on the left is a real ghost because we can't see her legs under the sheet. Whose husband is actually a zombie? The man on the left is just sick. The man on the right is a zombie because he's the only one who doesn't eat human food and has an empty plate. Water lilies grow on the lake. Every day, their number doubles. The lilies will completely cover the entire surface of the lake in 48 days. How many days will it take them to cover half of the lake? Forty-seven days. You see, every day the number of the water lilies doubles. On day 48, the lake will be completely covered with lilies. It means that on day 47, there will be twice as few lilies as on day 48. Jack noticed that someone regularly ruins his lawn. He decided to install a hidden camera and figure out who approached his house most often. After four days, he decided to check the footage and immediately realized who the culprit was. Can you guess who it is? Jack's neighbor Karen ruins his lawn. She's present in all the photos, but she tries to disguise herself so that she can't be recognized. A woman didn't have her driver's license with her. She didn't stop at a railroad crossing when the barrier was lowered, then ignoring the stop sign. She moved in the wrong direction along a one-way street and stopped only after passing three intersections. Traffic police officers, seeing all this, decided not to interfere. Why? The woman first traveled by train and then walked. Mary is trying to enter an ice castle to save her friend Logan, but there's a combination lock on the gate. Luckily, there's a clue carved on the ice. Here it is. 162. One number is correct and in the right place. 842. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. 526. Nothing is correct. Can you guess the code? The passcode is 184. First, we exclude 2 and 6, since in 526, no number is correct. In 842, two numbers are correct, so two of the numbers we need are 8 and 4. The last number must be 1, and since 1 is in its place, we can easily figure out where 8 and 4 must go. Mary opens the gate and enters the castle. She walks down an icy corridor and comes across three doors. There is a severe snowstorm behind the first door. In the second room, there's a dangerous snow dragon. And behind the third door, there's a lake covered with a layer of dark blue ice. Which door should Mary choose? The dragon is a definite no-no. The dark blue ice is thin and unsafe. Mary is likely to just fall into the lake. The first door is the best option. Mary crosses the room and finds herself in a long corridor. The Ice Queen's monsters start chasing her. The girl runs down the hallway and sees another three doors made of clear ice. There's a magical snow parrot in the first room. The second room is filled with water. And there's a small black room behind the third door. It looks more like a locker. Which door should Mary hide behind to avoid being found?
The Ice Queen's parrot behind the first door will scream when it sees Mary. The third door is a bad option because the doors are made of clear ice, so the monsters will spot her immediately. The second door is the best option. Mary swims away and finds herself in a big hall. She sees Logan, and they're about to run away together when the Ice Queen captures them in a cage. There are three levers next to the cage, and the Ice Queen gives Mary these hints. The first lever is going to open the cage, but they'll fall into a freezing cold underground lake. The second lever will open all the cages in the castle and release all the monsters that are inside. The third lever will open the cage, but only one person will be able to get out. What should the guys do? They should pull the third lever and let Logan out. After that, they should pull the first lever. Mary will fall into the water, but Logan will help her get out of the lake. John decided to make a vegetable salad for his friends. To prepare for it, he will need three peppers and the same number of tomatoes. And he needs fewer cucumbers than tomatoes, but more than radishes. How many different vegetables will John use in the salad? Nine point three peppers, three tomatoes, two cucumbers, and one radish. A professor went to have his lunch break, leaving three students in the lecture hall. When he returned, he realized that an answer sheet for an important exam had disappeared from his desk. He questioned the students. Kyle said, "Ten minutes after you'd left, my mom called me and asked me to meet with her near the college building. When I returned, the sheet was already gone." Brian said. No one called Kyle. He took something from your desk and left. And Ryan said, "Brian is telling the truth. When we realized that it was an answer sheet, we ran after him outside, but he had already left. Who should the professor believe?" Ryan and Brian are lying. They said they had run after Kyle outside, but it was raining, and they're both dry. Which of these artists is suspicious? The girl on the right has been using orange paint, not red. Then why do her clothes have red stains? Who is suspicious at this party? The second girl marked this glass. To know which of them contained poison, which of these students is suspicious? Student three only pretends to be writing; he's actually reading a magazine. Which of these women is suspicious? The woman on the right is only pretending to be pregnant. A prince married a simple girl and brought her to the palace. His mother, the queen, didn't like it at all. She started watching the girl and discovered that she secretly took some jewelry out of the palace and hid it in the ground under an oak tree. The queen immediately went to the prince and told him about it. The prince checked under the oak tree and actually found the jewels. His wife started begging him, "My prince, I swear, I didn't steal it for myself. I'm leaving the jewelry here so that my family can pick it up later." But the queen said, "She's lying to you. She hides the jewelry here because she wants to sell it when she runs away from the palace." Who's lying? The girl's lying. No one forbids her to visit her family or give them whatever they need openly. She hides it because she'll need the money after running away. John had a lunch break, so he went to the butcher to buy some meat. He asked the butcher to cut the meat in a specific way. The butcher asked if John was a firefighter. John said yes. How did the butcher guess John's profession? John was still wearing his uniform when he went on his lunch break. Mary went to the forest to pick some berries and mushrooms. Some time later, the girl realized she had gotten lost. 
Suddenly, she heard the trees crackling behind her back. There was a monster approaching! Mary ran as fast as she could and managed to get away from the monster. She saw a small house and went inside. An elderly lady lived in the house. She said she would help Mary, but Mary immediately realized that this lady was a shapeshifter. She was the monster in the forest! How did Mary know that? Have you noticed that the elderly woman has the same symbol on her hand as the monster had? Luckily, it turned out that the woman was not actually evil. She helped Mary to get out of the forest. The elderly lady from the forest has three cats. Snowball, Bella, and Lisa. They usually sleep on three different pillows, yellow, pink, and blue. Bella likes sleeping on the pink pillow. Snowball never chooses either pink or blue. Think about it and try to guess which pillow each of the cats sleeps on. Bella sleeps on the pink pillow, Snowball lies on the yellow one, and Lisa sleeps on the blue one. Now it's time to think fast. Why is Santa Claus so good at karate? Because he has a black belt, duh. What bear has no teeth? Marmalade bear. How can you make a rattlesnake cry? Take the rattle away. The royal family of Ravania were going to visit the city during their world trip, and, of course, they were all bringing their precious crowns with them. They asked the mayor of the city to take special precautions. Thank you. So, he placed the crowns in a safe in a hidden room in his office, guarded by a couple of security officers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. However, the next morning, when the mayor came to check on the crowns to report to the royal family that they were safe, he started panicking. Can you guess why? It's because the crowns inside the safe are not the real ones. The first crown has a price tag on it. The second crown is broken. And one of the gemstones on the third crown is missing. Oh no! That wouldn't happen if it was the real thing. The mayor wanted to make sure that whoever had stolen the crowns was caught. He also hoped the police would find them before the media learned about what had happened. And the only person who could help him was Detective Zelda. So, he immediately called her. The detective arrived at his office and inspected the secret room. She noticed something that might help her with her investigation. Can you figure out what it is? There's a piece of paper under one of the fake crowns. The thief left a note. Detective Zelda read it. Hmm. Dear Maya, I'm very disappointed in you. This accident has proved how inept you are at providing comfort and security for your guests, as well as your citizens. I believe I can be convinced to give the crowns back if you pay me a large, and I mean it, sum of money. Mark my words and count on what I say in my letter on this matter. Here is my contact number. 19.1-1.3-19.1-1.3 and 13.3-1.2-6.3-9.1. Yours truly, the Riddling Man. What can you make of this number? Well, the mayor thought it was a phone number. He immediately took his phone and dialed the number. But just as Detective Zelda suspected, no one answered. In one of the last sentences of his letter, the riddling man underlined mark, words, count, and letter. That must be a hint. The number before the dot indicates which word you should look for in the note, and the number after the dot tells you which letter you need in that word. For example, 19.1 means you need to find the 19th word, which is comfort. The letter you need is the first one, 19.1. 
which is C. When you do that for every number, you'll get Cafe West. Before Detective Zelda left for the cafe, she decided to check the security camera footage recorded at night. The mayor took her to the surveillance room. There were three different monitors, each showing the room from different angles. Detective Zelda realized only one of them was still recording live. Hmm. The other two were showing fake images. Which recording is real and why? Do you remember what the room looked like when Detective Zelda was inspecting it? The clock certainly wasn't on this wall. It was on the opposite one, so the footage on the first monitor is fake. The footage on the second monitor isn't real also. If you look closer, you'll see a moth flying around the room, but it repeats the same movement over and over again. That's badly edited fake footage, so it makes the footage from the third monitor the real one. Oh, yes. Detective Zelda rewound the footage and found the moment when the riddling man had broken into the room. He was covering his face, so it was impossible to tell what he looked like. Still, Detective Zelda managed to notice something that could help her find the criminal. Can you tell what it is? If you look at the lower left corner, you'll see someone walk into the room and leave it quickly while the riddling man is stealing the crowns. Hmm. Could that mean that the riddling man has a partner? Hmm. To find that out, Detective Zelda questioned all the security guards who had been working the night shift. The first guard, George, said that he'd been keeping watch in front of the door. The only time he left his place was when he took a short bathroom break. The second guard, Joe, said he'd been standing in front of the door to the mayor's office all night and the only person who took a break was George. Hmm. The third guard, Brian, said he'd been right there by the door as well. Hmm. Hmm. Detective Zelda knew only one of them was telling the truth and the other two were lying. Who is the liar? Do you remember what the shoes of the man who entered the room looked like? White sneakers, and that's what Brian is wearing. So he's lying. And since Joe didn't mention that Brian had left his place, he's a liar too. George is the only one who's telling the truth. Ciao. Brian and Joe immediately started begging Zelda. We can't end up in jail. We promised we didn't steal anything. You have to believe us, Detective Zelda asked. Then why did you lie? They said that they had heard some noise coming from the room while George was away. They decided that Brian would check the room and Joe would keep watch. When Brian saw someone in the room, he got scared and ran out of there. He told Joe that he would rather lose his job than have something bad happen to him. As for Joe, he lied because Brian was his best friend and he didn't want him to get fired. And since they never saw anyone enter or exit the room, they thought they were imagining things. After all, they were very tired. What do you think Zelda can do to check if the guards are telling the truth? She can check the surveillance footage of the street outside the building to confirm that nobody entered or left. When Zelda couldn't see anyone even walk across the street, she came to the conclusion that Brian and Joe were telling the truth. Yeah. The detective decided to check the secret room once again to figure out how the riddling man had gotten inside. Sometime later, she managed to spot another hidden door. Can you see it too? The bookcase is actually a door. Oh my god. She examined the door to figure out how to open it. She noticed three buttons, but only one could open the door. If Zelda pressed the wrong button, the door would get locked for good, and she would not be able to figure out where it led. Which button should she press? Take a look at the books next to the buttons. One of the titles is meaningless, while the others make sense. 
That must be an anagram, a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of another. When you rearrange the letters in the title, you'll get the second button. Mm. Detective Zelda pressed it, and the bookcase door opened. The woman saw a narrow hallway with stairs leading down. She took a step, and the door closed behind her back. She tried to force it open, but it wouldn't move. The only thing she could do was go down the stairs. She ended up in an underground pit. Inside, there was nothing but a shovel and a sign that showed her that she was around the pit. In the hole to the left, there were venomous snakes. The pit on the right was filled with poisonous gas. And on the ground right above her head, there was an angry dog with sharp teeth. What should she do? She should dig upwards. She needs to listen to the sounds the dog makes and wait for the animal to fall asleep. Then she should walk quietly past it. That must be how the riddling man entered and left the room. Detective Zelda didn't want to waste any more time, so she headed to Cafe West. A guy sitting at the table in the corner caught her eye. He looked suspicious. When Detective Zelda started walking towards him, he quickly wrote something on the newspaper he'd been reading. Then, he ran away through the back door. Detective Zelda tried to catch him, but failed. She checked the paper and found another note. It said, You're not the mayor, but I'll give him one last chance. It looks like you work for him, so bring me $20 million in cash. We can meet at the building that has the most stories in two hours. What building does the riddling man mean? The library. Of course, Detective Zelda was not going to give him any money. She took an empty bag to trick him into believing she had the cash so that he wouldn't run away. She went to the library. When she entered, she saw the riddling man wearing the same sunglasses and coat. He was waiting for her in the riddle and puzzle books section. Then, suddenly, someone accidentally pushed the woman. She dropped her bag. It fell on the floor and opened. The riddling man saw it was empty and understood that this was just a plan to catch him. He ran away. But he dropped something while escaping. It was a library book, and there was a library card inside. It had three different addresses of three different people who had borrowed the book before. Zelda immediately realized which was the riddling man's address. How did she figure it out? Remember the note the riddling man wrote to her at the cafe? The first address is written by the same person. Detective Zelda had two police officers break into the riddling man's apartment. They found the crowns, but the criminal was gone. For some reason, Detective Zelda felt that she would see the riddling man again. Uh-oh. Allie was missing for days when her husband Orson called the police to report it. Detective Wells arrived at the scene and found her purse buried in the garden. Inside, there was a note that read, It's a sign. You're mine. I redesign your new life. The police had three suspects with unusual names. Orson, her husband, Ryan, her best friend, and Atlas, her brother. Who took Allie? It was rhyme. Almost all the words in the note rhyme with his name. While driving in a storm, John saw three people standing in the rain at the bus stop. But he only had one seat available in his car. Who gets the ride? His childhood friend, an old lady that looks like she's freezing, or his wife? John asked his childhood friend to drive the old lady to the hospital and then take the car back to his house. And John himself will wait for the bus with his wife. Mark is locked in a 30-foot tall cell with an earthen floor and a window near the ceiling. There's nothing else in his room but a shovel and a bed. The entrance is blocked with concrete. How can he get out?
Mark can shovel the soil to the wall underneath the window and climb out. Detective Jones was called one day by Border Control about a suspicious pickup truck. Every day, the vehicle went back and forth between two countries with a large sack in the back of its truck bed. When the detective opened the sack, it was filled with sand. What was the driver smuggling? Trucks. A geography teacher vanished on the first day of school. When the police arrived, they suspected four people who claimed to have alibis. The landscaper was mowing the front lawn. The English teacher was giving students a surprise test. The principal was preparing for his welcoming speech. And the coach was meeting new students who wanted to join the football team. Who was lying? The English teacher. Of course! <laughs> students don't get surprise tests on the first day. Well, maybe not at this school. <laughs> a crazy scientist took 10 people into his lab to check their intelligence. He gave everyone two pills and a glass of water. He told them, one pill is a placebo and the other is poison. Whichever you take, I'll take. But somehow everyone ended up unconscious after the trial except for the scientist. How did he do it? Both pills were placebo. The poison was in the water. Shane and Mia went to Japan for their honeymoon. Only Shane came back, and Mia's family called the best detective in town. What should be the detective's first move? Inspect Shane's suitcase. Inspect Shane's house. Call the travel agency Shane and Mia used. Call the agency to see how many return tickets Shane had booked. He's a suspect, and he shouldn't know the police are investigating him to avoid losing the evidence. Someone knocked on Amy's hotel room door. When she opened it, she saw a mysterious man. He apologized and said he'd mistaken Amy's room for his. When he left, Amy called the police. Why? Nobody knocks on the door of their own room. This is a technique used by people who want to break into someone's home. A worker was found unconscious near the entrance of an abandoned building. He has no memory of what happened, but seems to have fallen from the building. Detective Marks is assigned to this case, and he must figure out whether the worker fell or was pushed. He goes to the first floor, opens the window, and throws out a small rock. He does the same on the second floor and all the way to the top. When the detective comes back down, he's sure the worker was pushed. How does he know? He had to open windows on all floors to throw out rocks. This was an abandoned building, and someone closed the window right after pushing the worker. James ordered a coffee from his local bakery, put in some sugar, but then noticed a fly in his cup. He told the staff member, and they took back the coffee and brought him a new one. But when he got a sip, he got angry. Why? His new coffee was already sweetened. The staff member only removed the fly. Tom was walking in a snowy park at 10 p.m. when he got attacked from behind. He didn't see who knocked him out, and he immediately went to the police. The detectives questioned four suspects. Adam said he was at a suit fitting for his dinner later. Daniel said he was hosting a party at his place. Susan said she was working out before going to work. And Luke said he went to the park to get some cool photos of flying birds. One of them is lying. Who?
It's Luke. It's next to impossible to see birds at night in winter. Right before the final soccer match, the team's goalkeeper went missing. The police arrived and they had three suspects from the rival team. Mike said he was signing autographs for his friends. Jake said he had broken his ankle and he was getting a massage. John was training at the gym before the match. The police immediately knew who did it. It was Jake. You don't get a massage when you break your ankle. A doctor walked into an unconscious patient's ward. There, he saw a nurse buttoning up her shirt. As soon as she noticed him, she exclaimed, It's not what you think! The nurse isn't lying, but why was her shirt unbuttoned in the first place? She got locked out of the changing room and knew that the patient was unconscious. So she went to his ward to change into her uniform. Yeah, I believe her. A group of six friends decided to check out an abandoned house in their neighborhood. When they arrived, Mark, one of the group, warned his friends not to go in. But all of them ignored him and walked in anyway. Mark stayed outside, but his friends never came out. Mm -hmm. What did he see that stopped him from going into the house? There were footprints going in, but none coming out. Detective Stevenson is taken by some of his mean supervisors who want to test his intelligence. They put him in a room with two doors. One leads to freedom, while the other opens onto a bottomless pit. There are two guards, either responsible for one door. One of them always tells the truth, while the other always lies. Stevenson doesn't know who's the honest one, and he can only ask one question to one of them. What should the question be to save his life? If I ask the security guard next to you which door leads to freedom, what will he say? The honest guard will say that the liar will point to the dangerous door. The liar will point to that one too. No matter who Stevenson asks, he should pick the door neither of them will point at. Melissa is walking down a dark alley when she notices a dark figure following her. She walks into a restaurant and sits at a table. The mysterious figure does the same. Then she yawns and immediately knows she's got a stalker. How? When she looked up, the mysterious figure was also yawning. It means they had been watching her. The director of a large company was found unconscious in his office. The police showed up, saw the messy office, and realized that a fight had gone down. They went to his secretary and asked to see the list of visitors that day. Immediately, they knew who did it. How? The last visitor was the culprit. During the fight, the wall clock also stopped because it got hit. It showed the exact time the last appointment took place. Sarah wanted to get some money from her brother for a house. She couldn't tell him the truth and asked him for an expensive gift. After a week, her brother gave her a glamorous tiara. Then she went to her second brother, asked for money, but he gave her jewelry. Still, she's got both money and jewelry. How is it possible? She asked for a similar jewelry item and sold one of them. Susie went on a dating website and found three guys that she liked, all with some very impressive backgrounds. But only one of them is telling the truth. Can you guess which one? Shane said he was an astronaut. He went to Mars and enjoyed a beautiful sunset. Chris said he was a scientist and went to the North Pole. 
he enjoyed being on floating ice and seeing both arctic foxes and penguins. Dylan said he was a pilot, and once he flew his helicopter so fast, he broke the sound barrier. Shane is telling the truth. The sunset on Mars is blue. There are no penguins in the North Pole, and helicopters can't travel faster than the speed of sound. Oh, and yes, we'll also ignore the fact that no one's been to Mars yet. Susie also thinks Shane has beautiful eyes, so who are we to disrupt this love connection? So a restaurant owner called the police and said a customer had stolen a large sum of money. When the police arrived, the restaurant security guard already had three suspects. Thomas said, I was just walking along the street. I didn't even enter your restaurant. Dylan was angry. I've never been to this place before. I was sitting in my car when that guy ran up to me and started throwing accusations. John said, I did visit the restaurant yesterday, but I just came in to get a coffee and didn't stay longer than five minutes. After listening to the suspects, the police arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Dylan. His car was parked in the place reserved for regular clients, but he claimed he'd never been to the restaurant before. Harrison was walking home when someone threw a bag over his head and knocked the guy out. When he came around, he found himself in a room with four doors and a tiny window. Harrison opened the window, but it was too small for him to squeeze through. Suddenly, the guy spotted a piece of paper lying on the floor. It was a note that said, Only one door leads outside. The other three don't lead anywhere. You can try to open just one door, and only once. If you don't succeed, all of them will get locked forever. Harrison thought for a while and made the right choice. How did he figure it out? He opened the window. This created a draft. The guy checked the keyholes and felt some cool air coming from one of them. It was the door to freedom. It was Sunday morning when a submarine captain found one of his sailors lying unconscious on his bunk. Someone had hit him on the head. It could only be another crew member. The captain had three suspects, Mateo, David, and Owen. He questioned them, and that's what they said. Mateo, I couldn't do it. I was checking the equipment in the machinery compartment. David, when it happened, I was washing dishes left after dinner. Owen, at that moment, I was busy posting a new video on TikTok. Who was lying? It was Owen. People can't use the internet for personal purposes on submarines. Leo studied art in college and rented an apartment together with his friend Andrew. Leo had bad eyesight and was wearing his glasses at all times. One day, Andrew didn't notice Leo's glasses and accidentally sat on them. They were beyond repair. Leo was so furious, he shouted at his friend, and Andrew ran away. Leo called his girlfriend and asked her to give him a lift to the optician. He couldn't drive without his glasses. They were turning onto the main road when they spotted Andrew. He was lying in the bushes, unmoving. Leo immediately called the police and ambulance. Andrew was taken to a hospital, and a police officer started to question the witnesses. Leo told him, My girlfriend was behind the wheel when I spotted Andrew. We immediately stopped and called you. We didn't see anything suspicious. The police officer arrested Leo. Why? With such poor eyesight and without glasses, how could he notice Andrew lying in the bushes? Lily called the police. She found her neighbor, a famous artist, on the floor of his apartment. The unconscious man was quickly rushed to a hospital. The police had three suspects. Lily said, I live next door. I heard some shouting and loud bangs. I went to check on what was going on and found him on the floor. Zachary told the police the artist was his friend. We agreed to meet at the restaurant, and I came to give him a lift. 
And Cooper said, I ordered a painting from him, but when I came to pick it up, I saw the police. Who's guilty? It's Zachary. If they agreed to meet at the restaurant, why did he come to the artist's apartment? You wake up locked in a room with no windows and just one automatic door. Above the door, there's a large screen. Suddenly, it turns on. You hear a voice. It sounds muffled. Crack this riddle and you're free to go. If not, the room will be filled with toxic gas in 5 minutes. After that, you see the riddle. What could it mean? Hopefully, you'll realize in time that it means sitting on top of the world. Okay, time for more riddles, the parents' edition. There are three categories of questions. Easy, which award one point each, average for two points, and hard for three points. We're going to start with the easy ones. Remember, every correct answer gives you one point. Jason and Steven are home alone with their kids. Jason is talking to his mother, and Steven is watching a baseball game on the TV. Who's being negligent? Jason. Although both babies might fall out the window and both dads should watch out, Jason's baby is on the higher floor. Whoops. Mila and Gregor cook dinner for their kids. Which one of them is uh, <clears throat> the most confused? Mela. She accidentally mixed up the plates. She gave the dog her daughter's food and is about to feed her daughter dog food. Yum. Sabrina and her son went to the mountains to spend the day sliding. Adam is barbecuing in the backyard while watching his daughter. Who's not watching their child properly? Sabrina. Her son is sliding right into a big hole in the ice. Rebecca and Natalie took their kids to the lake. The boys are about to jump from the cliff. Whose child is in danger? Natalie's. There's rocks under the cliff her son is about to jump from. Megan and Rachel were cleaning their kids' rooms. Rachel noticed her son's phone and decided to check it, and Rachel found her daughter's diary. Who's in trouble? Rachel. It's bad to read a child's personal things, but she's also going to be busted because her daughter is about to walk into the room. <laughs> Mary and her son are spending time on the beach. Chris and his children are watching a TV. Which parent is doing something wrong? Mary. It's dangerous for anyone to be in the water during thunderstorms. Now we're moving to harder questions. Every correct answer awards two points. Meredith is teaching her daughter to do her makeup. Beverly is teaching her teenager to style her hair. Which mom is doing something wrong? Beverly. The hair straightener isn't plugged in. Nicole and Diana are spending time with their kids. Nicole is reading to her son, and Diana is watching cartoons with her daughter. Who is not behaving wisely? Nicole. She forgot about the food that she's cooking in the oven, and it's burning. So it's going to be takeout tonight. Bradley and Ryan's sons are blamed for painting a face on a neighbor's fence. Both boys denied doing it, and both fathers believe their sons. 
Who's been misled? Ryan. His son still has green paint on his hands that he couldn't properly wash off. Jennifer went for a walk with her son, but she got distracted talking on the phone. Mark left his daughter in a closed car while he entered a store to buy garden tools. Who has made a bigger mistake? Mark It's dangerous to leave people or animals in a closed car, especially in the heat, when the car warms up very fast and there's a lack of fresh air inside. Brian is teaching his teen son how to drive. And Nancy is cooking a dinner with her daughter. Who isn't being wise? Brian. Nancy's daughter seems to be old enough to cut an apple, especially under supervision. But Brian can't control all of his son's actions in the car. Martha and her son went to the jungle. And she stopped to take some selfies. Peter took his son camping, and he's setting up the tent while his son is trying to light a fire. Who's not being smart? Martha. Her baby is approaching a snake that can be venomous. Melissa and Stephanie are doing chores. Melissa is handling the laundry and Stephanie is cleaning the kitchen. Who should be more careful? Stephanie. Her daughter put her cell phone in a dishwasher. Tiffany and Michael's sons came back home after a study evening at their friend's house. Neither parents are suspicious. However, someone's son wasn't studying tonight. Who overlooked a party guy? Tiffany. Her son has a lipstick stain on his collar. Jack and Vivian took their kids to school. Now Jack is walking to work and Vivian is driving to a store. Who forgot something? Jack. He's still wearing his daughter's pink school backpack. Looking good, Jack! Charles and Penelope cooked breakfast for their kids. Which parent probably didn't get much sleep the previous night? Penelope. She gave her daughter a raw potato and didn't even peel it. Sandra is doing gardening with her daughter. George is watching his child swimming in a pool. Who's being stupid? George. He fell asleep and left his son in the pool unsupervised. What's more, the boy took off his armbands and can drown. Uh Uh-oh. Elizabeth and John's daughters came home. They said they were doing a group science project, and both parents believe their daughters. Who didn't detect a lie? John. His daughter is wearing a sweater on a hot day, so she could be hiding something. Jessica and Aaron cooked a dinner for their families. Jessica cooked Thai soup, and Aaron made mashed potatoes. Who is a bad cook? Jessica. Her daughter poured her soup in a flower pot. Travis didn't let his daughter go to her friend's birthday party and told her to do her homework all day. Christina's son had to spend the day in his bedroom too, instead of going to the movies. When the teenagers came down to dinner at 7 o'clock, which parent didn't notice they're being lied to?
Travis. It's raining, and his daughter has wet hair. It means she was outside and not sitting in her bedroom. And finally, the hardest questions for three points each. Dustin is cooking dinner with his daughter. Joseph is mowing the lawn while his child is playing nearby. Who isn't smart? Joseph. Lawnmowers are very dangerous machines and should never be used if there are kids around. Sean is teaching his little son how to chop wood. Camilla is listening to music and washing the dishes while her baby is sleeping upstairs. Who's making a mistake? Camilla. The music is too loud, and she won't hear if her son wakes up and cries. Brandon and Daniel are watching their kids playing in the backyard. Who's not being wise? Daniel. His son is playing in the sunshine without a hat on and might get sunstroke. Pamela is getting ready for the meeting with her son's teacher at 12 o'clock. William is driving his son to a birthday party. Who isn't very attentive? Pamela. She must have confused the time. The meeting was at 12 o'clock, but it's already 1.30. Thomas is reading a newspaper while watching his son. Molly is talking on the phone while dinner is cooking in the oven. Who should rethink their actions? Molly. She forgot to turn on the oven. Samantha and Bob are sending their kids on a school field trip. Which of the parents forgot to do something? Bob. Why is he holding his son's lunch? The kid is not eating today. Sum up your points to check your results. If you got 25 points or less, you scored below average. But don't worry, check some of our other riddles to train for the next time. If you got 26 to 45, you have an average result. Keep it up. If you got between 46 to 60 points, you have an above average result and you definitely are a riddles master. And finally, if you have 61 or more, you're a real genius. Or you're on your second or third time watching this video. Come on, fess up. Whose wife is a vampire? This guy's wife is a vampire because she only came to the party after sunset. Whose husband is a werewolf? The girl on the left is sweeping up her cat's hair. See? There's a cat in the background. Meanwhile, there are scratches on the floor and walls in the house of the girl on the right. And this shoe has a torn front. Her husband must be a werewolf. Whose wife is actually a ghost? The woman on the right is wearing a ghost costume. It's Halloween. But the woman on the left is a real ghost because we can't see her legs under the sheet. Whose husband is actually a zombie? The man on the left is just sick. The man on the right is a zombie because he's the only one who doesn't eat human food and has an empty plate. Water lilies grow on the lake. Every day, their number doubles. The lilies will completely cover the entire surface of the lake in 48 days. How many days will it take them to cover half of the lake?
47 days. You see, every day the number of the water lilies doubles. On day 48, the lake will be completely covered with lilies. It means that on day 47, there will be twice as few lilies as on day 48. Jack noticed that someone regularly ruins his lawn. He decided to install a hidden camera and figure out who approached his house most often. After four days, he decided to check the footage and immediately realized who the culprit was. Can you guess who it is? Jack's neighbor Karen ruins his lawn. She's present in all the photos, but she tries to disguise herself so that she can't be recognized. A woman didn't have her driver's license with her. She didn't stop at a railroad crossing when the barrier was lowered. Then, ignoring the stop sign, she moved in the wrong direction along a one-way street and stopped only after passing three intersections. Traffic police officers, seeing all this, decided not to interfere. Why? The woman first traveled by train and then walked. Mary is trying to enter an ice castle to save her friend Logan, but there's a combination lock on the gate. Luckily, there's a clue carved on the ice. Here it is. 162. One number is correct and in the right place. 842. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. 526. Nothing is correct. Can you guess the code? The passcode is 184. First, we exclude 2 and 6, since in 526, no number is correct. In 842, two numbers are correct, so two of the numbers we need are 8 and 4. The last number must be 1, and since 1 is in its place, we can easily figure out where 8 and 4 must go. Mary opens the gate and enters the castle. She walks down an icy corridor and comes across three doors. There is a severe snowstorm behind the first door. In the second room, there's a dangerous snow dragon. And behind the third door, there's a lake covered with a layer of dark blue ice. Which door should Mary choose? The dragon is a definite no-no. The dark blue ice is thin and unsafe. Mary is likely to just fall into the lake. The first door is the best option. Mary crosses the room and finds herself in a long corridor. The Ice Queen's monsters start chasing her. The girl runs down the hallway and sees another three doors made of clear ice. There's a magical snow parrot in the first room. The second room is filled with water. And there's a small black room behind the third door. It looks more like a locker. Which door should Mary hide behind to avoid being found? The Ice Queen's parrot behind the first door will scream when it sees Mary. The third door is a bad option because the doors are made of clear ice, so the monsters will spot her immediately. The second door is the best option. Mary swims away and finds herself in a big hall. She sees Logan, and they're about to run away together when the Ice Queen captures them in a cage. There are three levers next to the cage, and the Ice Queen gives Mary these hints. The first lever is going to open the cage, but they'll fall into a freezing cold underground lake. The second lever will open all the cages in the castle and release all the monsters that are inside. The third lever will open the cage, but only one person will be able to get out. What should the guys do? They should pull the third lever and let Logan out. After that, they should pull the first lever. Mary will fall into the water, but Logan will help her get out of the lake. John decided to make a vegetable salad for his friends. To prepare for it, he will need three peppers and the same number of tomatoes. And he needs fewer cucumbers than tomatoes, but more than radishes. How many different vegetables will John use in the salad? Nine point three peppers, three tomatoes, two cucumbers, and one radish. 
A professor went to have his lunch break, leaving three students in the lecture hall. When he returned, he realized that an answer sheet for an important exam had disappeared from his desk. He questioned the students. Kyle said, Ten minutes after you'd left, my mom called me and asked me to meet with her near the college building. When I returned, the sheet was already gone. Brian said, No one called Kyle. He took something from your desk and left. And Ryan said, Brian is telling the truth. When we realized that it was an answer sheet, we ran after him outside, but he had already left. Who should the professor believe? Ryan and Brian are lying. They said they had run after Kyle outside, but it was raining and they're both dry. Which of these artists is suspicious? 